Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about the spot clone and heel tools that are found in Capture One. I'm going to explain how to use them and when it may be best to use one over another. We're going to start with the spot removal tool. It is fine-tuned to remove sensor spots and dust from your image. And I'll demonstrate in a moment. It really can't do much more than that. It's really made to remove those types of imperfections from an image. Now I have this image here and you could see that it has some sensor spots on it. Now the tool is located up in the brush cursor well. And you can see it's right here. It's this circle and if I hover over it, it says remove spot. We'll click on that, make that active, and you can see we have this little brush now as our cursor. There are some brush attributes. If we right click with the mouse, we'll come up and we have radius. That's the actual size of the brush. So you could adjust that there. Also, are you removing a sensor spot or some dust? In this case, I have sensor spots. So choose what you're removing there. You also could change the size of the brush with the bracket keys, the right bracket key will make the brush larger and the left bracket key smaller. And what you simply need to do is make your brush a little bit bigger than the spot or dust particle that you want to remove. And then just simply go over it and left click with the mouse once. Now one limitation of this tool is you can't draw with it. So you can't just paint a large area or draw a line or anything like that. So what you would do is you would just go over each of your, in this case, sensor spots and just single click once with the mouse. And I'm just going to click on all the ones I see readily. And that's it. When you're done with the tool, choose one of the cursor tools, the hand tool, the arrow tool, and you can see it removed those sensor spots very, very easily. So you could go very quickly. Now I mentioned one limitation of the tool is you really can't paint with it. Another is, and as I, as I mentioned already, it's kind of fine-tuned to do either sensor spots or dust. Anything more significant than that, it won't be able to handle. It's not made to do that. For example, we'll go to this image here and I have a couple seagulls off in the distance. If I choose this tool, and I'll say, I'll stay with the spot removal for this demo, and I make my brush a little bit larger than the, in this case, seagull, and I zoomed in so you could see, I'm just going to left click once. Now you could probably see, I'll go to the hand tool, that it really didn't fully remove the seagull. The seagull is still faintly there. Again, that tool is really made for sensor spots or dust. That's what it's looking for. And the seagull is just not the right type of uh, imperfection for it to remove. So for the seagull, we're going to need something else. That something else is either the clone or heel tools. And to use those tools, you need to have a clone or heel layer. So they're done on their own layer. So we're going to go over here on the right hand side. And you may have noticed, those of you that haven't seen any of my previous videos, that my Capture One workspace is different than what it is by default. That's because I customized it to my workflow. I did that in video two, and I really encourage you to watch that video if you haven't already, because I think customizing the workspace is one of the best features of Capture One. And in that video, I demo how to do it. Now, I need to, uh, let's start with clone. And I'm going to explain the difference between clone and heel. Let's get a clone layer. We're going to click on the plus sign, but we're going to hold the left mouse button in when we do it. You can see we have four choices. The bottom choice is clone or heel layer. So we'll click that clone layer. Now we have a clone layer. We need the actual right brush. I'm still on the spot brush. That's not the brush you need. Just click on the draw mask brush. Just click once on that. Uh, specifically, it's that top one, if you hold in with the left mouse button. So we want this brush, and you can see now our brush turns into this more elaborate looking brush. Uh, right click, and you'll have the brush attributes. We have the size, the hardness of the brush, 
the opacity and flow of the brush. And when you're really removing something like these seagulls, we want opacity and flow at 100 each. You have then the uh, options for airbrush, pen pressure if you're using a Wacom tablet, which I normally am using, but I'm demoing this with the mouse. The auto mask and link brush and eraser settings, which aren't important for this demonstration. So what I want to do is, again, I could do the size of the brush here. Or I could use the bracket keys again, left bracket key smaller, right bracket key larger. But we're going to get that center circle so it's just a little bit bigger than the, in this case, seagull. Click once. Now what Capture One will do is it will sample an area that it thinks is similar. And you can see it really isn't similar. It's sampling the blue sky over here. And with Clone, what it's actually doing is it's copying those pixels and just replacing these pixels with those pixels. So it's kind of like copy and paste. We're copying the pixels over here and pasting them over there. So wherever I put this, I could drag it around. Now I got, I'm, I'm copying trees. See how it's copying the trees over here? So it's a straight kind of copy and paste. So what we would do is drag this around to a point that we think it blends better and that is pretty good right there. Now, one quirk about these tools, that is the clone and heal tool. Now I wanna remove this other seagull. I'll click here and you'll notice it just removed it, but there's no handles or overlay. That's because this is tied to this. So as I move this around, if you look over here on the left, you'll see that that is moving that as well. So you may have to use individual layers for everything you want to clone or heal away from your image. I don't like that feature, but that's the way it is. So uh, that now this will do the same thing for the heel, which I'm going to do in a moment. But you could see what we're dealing with here. So again, I could go over these trees. Now it's not sampling here. It's sampling kind of the similar angle. So this uh, seagull was right here where my cursor is. And then maybe as I measure down here, it's like uh, down in these trees on an angle, a specific angle. Well, it's doing that same amount of length and angle to measure over here, even though we can't see that overlay. So you get an idea of what we're talking about. So we go up here, we're going to have, you know, so there is that limitation. So, you know, it kind of drives me nuts actually, but you have to do it on individual layers. So if you have, um, you know, a real elaborate, uh, like multiple objects that you have to clone out of your image, then you'll have to use individual layers for each of those. Now, as far as heal is concerned, we'll do that. We'll click on this plus sign. We'll go down to a new heal layer. Again, you would pick the same brush. Okay, so you pick the brush. And again, the, the brush attributes are the same, right? We're gonna get that circle a little bit larger. We'll click once. And you'll see now it took the pixels. It looks like it took them, but what it's actually doing if we come off we come off you could see now even though it's over the blue sky here it's not really totally blue there what it's doing is it's taking the texture and tone from here and blending it with the color that's over here that's the difference between clone and heal clone is actually copying and pasting the exact pixels heal is just copying the tone that's the brightness level, more or less, and the texture, and then blending it with the color that is there. So if I move it over the tree, now you'll see it's real dark, but when I come off, you see how it became lighter because it's blending it with the color. So that's the difference between clone and heal. If you're doing like um, someone has maybe a mole on their face or, you know, something that, not a mole, but maybe just blemishes, um, that's where you'd prefer to use heal over clone. It will just look better on something like skin. Um, as far as this is concerned, um, I think it probably is a better choice over clone. But again, it's similar to clone that now if I go over here to this left seagull and click once, 
you can see how it removed it, but it will go wherever I put this handle. So they're tied together. So again, it's a better choice than, or it's, it's a necessity that you do these on different layers. So well, in this case, it worked out pretty good. I got them, the, both of those seagulls removed and it looks very natural. So sometimes you could get away with putting limited uh, clones or heels, multiple clones or heels on one layer, but more often you're going to have to put or create individual layers for all these different clones you need to do and or heels you need to do. So I hope that adequately, adequately explained how to use spot removal, clone, and heel with Capture One. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.